more trig identities practice. So this time what I want to do for you is do some trig identities that are in your homework from question eight, but I only want you to keep playing this video if you've already tried them and you're stuck. Okay, so this is last resort. I don't, I can't figure it out. You need to try, try, try and do some brain exercises in order for you to be able to do these on your own. It doesn't just help for you to watch me do them, although this should be somewhere you can come to to get that extra little boost to make it easier for you to understand. So the first thing I've done here is I've written out the trig identities that you're going to need to use. These are on page 200, 200, 300. What page are they on in your book? 309 in your textbook and 8a is from 310. So I'm going to do all the questions from number eight. I always find that, you know, if you see the steps and have someone explain them, it's so much easier than just, uh, you know, floundering around trying to figure things out. Okay, so 8a, we take a look at this. We have sine squared phi. This is the, the Greek symbol phi. Um, it's not the null set that you might think. It's just a symbol phi. So sine squared phi, 1 minus cos phi, 1 plus cos phi. So this is the easier side. This is the most difficult. So I'm going to start with the most difficult side so that I can try to simplify it. Now you should also note that on the right side, I only have cos left here. So that's a, a little clue to you that somehow you've got to change sine squared phi into something that's going to have a cos in it. And you have a, a rational expression here and you don't here. So somehow you want to divide this out. So you have to kind of think backwards a little bit to get to where you're trying to go. So sine squared phi, that would be the same thing as one minus cos squared phi squared phi over 1 minus cos phi. Now the worst thing you could do at this point is to divide these things out and say, ah, that's equal to that. You can't divide this by this. You know in mathematics things have to be in brackets and multiplied um, in order for you to divide things out, right? 2 times 3 divided by 2. If I put a plus sign or a minus sign in here, I can't divide the 2's out. So just remember that. It's another one of those little things you have to keep in your mind when you're doing any kind of math, basic rules. But you should recognize that this can be written as a difference of squares. It is a difference of squares. One is a perfect square. One squared is one. Square root of one is one. So I'm going to write this as one plus cos phi times one minus cos phi. And I think you can see right away how this is going to be just what the doctor ordered here. I can divide these out and look, I'm left with the right side. So right side equals one plus cos and you should make this nice and neat like this. And then you say left side equals right side and you have proven the identity. Okay, so let's go on to this one here. Tan squared alpha, one plus tan squared alpha equals sine squared alpha. The easier side here, right? This is the easier side. So that's what we want to work towards. So we're going to just leave that over here. The right side is sine squared alpha. I'm going to work with the left side. Make sure you label it. So I have tan squared alpha over one plus tan squared alpha. Look, I've got, I've got to get rid of this somehow, right? It's going to have to divide out to give me this. But tan, remember, is sine squared alpha over cos squared alpha, right? And one plus tan squared alpha, oh, look up here. Here's a lovely little identity for it. So I'm going to start by writing it out like this, tan squared alpha. I'm going to replace this little more complicated one with something a little easier. And now I'm going to break tan and secant down into sines and cosines because that's what I want to end up with, right? I want a sine here. So tan squared alpha is sine squared alpha over cos squared alpha and 1 over secant squared alpha so I'm dividing let me write it this way first I'll, I'll write it out and then we'll, we'll switch it around divided by and secant squared is 1 over 1 over cos squared alpha when you divide, you invert and multiply, and wow, look, you can see we're getting there. We're going to have that answer in no time flat here. So I have sine squared over cos squared alpha times, invert and multiply, 
cos squared alpha over 1 if you want. Divide those out and we're left with sine squared alpha. And again, left side equals right side. Wasn't that fun? Yes, it was fun. You love it. You know you do. Okay, cos squared x equals 1 minus sine x, 1 plus sine x. We have a squared on this side, and on this side, look, we have a difference of squares. So let's leave the left side alone this time. It's the more completed, sweetened up little side. And on the right side here, we're going to rewrite this by either you can expand it or you might know right away that this is the same as 1 minus sine squared x. If you didn't, let's expand it just to prove that I'm right. Plus sine x minus sine x minus sine squared x. So these cancel out, right? It's a difference of squares. So I have 1 minus sine squared x. I want that to be cos squared x. Oh, look way up here. Cos squared x is 1 minus sine squared x, or theta in that case. So I can say this is equal to cos squared x, and left side is equal to right side. That one was pretty easy, wasn't it? Okay, now let's take a look at d. Sine squared theta plus 2 cos squared theta minus 1 equals cos squared theta. Obviously, this is the easier side. We're going to work with the left side. So somehow I have to end up with a cos squared theta. So that means I have to work with this term. I don't want a sine squared. Look, my answer just is cos. I'll write that over here. Cos squared theta. So sine squared theta, look way up here. Sine squared theta is 1 minus cos squared theta. So let's replace that by this. So I get 1 minus cos squared theta plus 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Oh, isn't that sweet? Look, 1 minus 1, that's gone. And 2 cos squared theta minus a 1 cos squared theta is a cos squared theta, and left side equals right side. It looks so much more complicated than that, didn't it? And it simplifies to just such a basic answer. Okay, 8e, sine fourth alpha minus cos fourth alpha. Where did we see any fourth powers? We didn't see that before. That should be your clue. So this is going to be my easier side because it's only squared and I'm going to need to work with this. So sine to the power four, power four, and you should recognize this is a difference of squares. So the square root of sine fourth alpha would be sine squared alpha. And the square root of cos fourth would be cos squared alpha. So now I can break this into two parts. So I have sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha. So I'm doing difference of squares. So I add and I subtract the two squares. So this times this. And over here, right side, I have sine squared alpha minus cos squared alpha. Okay, so it looks pretty dismal at this point, doesn't it? <laughs> like, what am I going to do with all this stuff over here? Jeez, jeez Louise. But sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha. Whoa, just a minute. Let's flip back. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. So sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha is also equal to 1. This was, again, much easier than it looks. So now I have 1 times sine squared alpha minus cos squared alpha, which is the right side. Left side equals right side. Or maybe a little therefore if you want to. Okay, only one more from question eight, and then uh, hopefully, like I said, you tried this on your own first before you're on this little video, because they don't want to just, you know, open your mouth and, and I'll pour it in. You need to try. You need to practice, okay? Okay, so this one, I have tans and I have a sine and a cos. So obviously, this is the easier side. I want to work with the left side. So tan theta from your identities, tan theta is sine theta over cos theta, right? And to this, I'm adding 1 over tan theta. 
Well, 1 over tan theta, that's equal to cotangent theta. And if tan theta is sine over cos, then cotan theta is just cos over sine. Okay. So I'm going to replace this by cos theta over sine theta. Okay, so I've bro broken it down into these little building blocks of sines and cosines, which is good because, look, that's what I want over here. Now, anytime you're asked to add something, you have to add to get to one little term here. That means you need a common denominator, right? That's going to be the trick here, a common denominator. And the common denominator just happens to be sine theta, cos theta, when I multiply these together. So if I make, I'm just going to write it the other way around, just because that's the final answer. It doesn't matter. Cos times sine is sine times cos. And that means that I multiplied this by sine theta, so I have to multiply this by sine theta. So I get sine squared theta. And I multiply this by cos to make sine theta cos theta, and I have cos squared theta. And just like in the question up above, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1, and that's what you wanted here. So even if you were kind of stuck and you're saying, oh, I don't know, how am I going to get a 1 here? You should recognize if this this is right down here and this has to be equal to 1, then is this 1? Absolutely it's 1. We know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. And bingo, we're done. So that's what I wanted to do for you. Left side equals right side. Therefore, and maybe QED if you want to get fancy. Um, I just wanted to do those for you so that, you know, sometimes just a little bit of help goes a long way to help you doing other trig identities. And I hope that helped you. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know if it helped you out and subscribe.